Everybody live from 73 here. So what we're gonna be doing is harvesting what's left off of Rasputia, my other persimmon tree. If you have not been around, you don't know who Rasputia is. Number one, she is a character on the movie Norbit and we named my tree Rasputia. So Rasputia has been spitting out fruit ever since Bonita, my other original persimmon tree has been down. So without further ado, we're just going to get right into it and I'm going to just start taking them off. I want to say hi to everybody that's coming in. I'm going to try to keep this quick. I did. You see this? You see what I do? I did all of this just to forget my pruners. Let me see how high that is. Yeah, we got to get those. So hold on. Hang out. Let me go grab the pruners. I won't be able to do anything without them. All right. Okay, you guys. I should even got my microphone. Totally forgot my mic. I'm not ready. You see the sun going down? That's kind of what I'm trying to beat. So, it's good to see everybody in here. For the ones that's up top, I got the Fiskars Power Stroke again. The long one so I can reach because I can't reach up there. And Lady Led is telling me not to get on no ladders. Ooh, it's a little brisk. It shouldn't be this cold in the south, y'all. It's cold in the south. Let me see what we got. Upstate South Carolina in here. All right, upstate. You see how cold it is? Persimmon tree in your yard, too. You see how cold this is? If you in South Carolina. All right, I'm going to get right into it. But before I get going, I want to show you something. I want to show you these we're gonna do a test now i happen to have one of the whoo they always want to get away from me i actually have one of the persimmons from the other video that has softened up it's not totally soft but it's really soft so we're going to eat this we're going to taste that this is the tamapan persimmon you can't see how soft it is i'm trying not to bust it open but these, they're beautiful, but you want them to get super jelly soft like this. But the, the beauty of the fruit itself is incredible. All right. And I know people really don't get into it. And I'm going to tell you this. Once you start growing your own fruit, you're going to see it different. It's not just going to be food. It's going to be beauty. It's going to be artwork. Okay, so I'm going to take as many questions as I can. Then I'm going to get started. Okay, yes, they do look just like acorns. I always say they look like a little boy with a hat on. Uh, I don't know if you remember back in the day, the records, they was called Peter Pan Records. And a little Peter Pan guy on each little 45 record to tell you a story, you know. He kind of looked like this. He just his hat was pointy. That's what I look. That's what I see every time I see this. I see a little bit of my childhood. So I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna put these down. And we're gonna compare these to the other. These are the gyro persimmons. Okay. We set these on the table here so they don't get lost. And we're going to go straight up. Matter of fact. Bring this stuff over here. And I'm going to bring y'all with me. Okay. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. But I really want you to be able to see this. Put my bucket down here. I'm trying to make it so you guys can see some questions. I can see some questions. But uh, let's 
let's see. There we go. There we go. Now you can see everything. These are the fruit that I wait for every day. Uh, piece of work said, I saw one lonely tree left at Home Depot. You should have snagged it. Yes, you should have. Yes, you should have. Look at this. Now, the reason I'm going live right now, you guys, you can either twist these off like this. You can either twist them off or you can snip them off. If things get too weird, I snip them off. But for the most part, if I got time, I just go ahead and just uh, twist them off. I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you the difference between the two. This, everybody is wondering. This is the Tamapan. Now, the sizes are real. This is my real head. <laughs> okay. This is a gyro persimmon. This is the actual sizes. This is almost as big as my hand. It's like big as a cheeseburger. All right, these are a nice size, but they're as big as a, a beefsteak tomato. Okay, so um, this, there's a difference. I got a, a, I got several comments. Let me take this down a notch so you can, so I can see you. Um, I got several comments in the comments, and I don't know if they watched the full video. They saw me eat one straight up crunchy i went from this tree you do not eat these straight up crunchy it'll turn your head inside out like a t-shirt okay after gym practice you eat this one hard crunchy everybody said it didn't look ripe there's something called non-astringent you cannot eat these right off the tree you have to wait till they get jelly like like the one i just showed you which is this guy here. You got to wait till that. That's like a jelly ball. Literally a jelly ball. See that? I mean, you got to let that whole thing get soft like a water balloon. Or you can't eat it. You literally cannot eat it. I don't think you'll be able to swallow it. Nana, the Tamapan persimmon most beautiful fruit I have ever seen. There's a lot of them out there, but this one you can have in your backyard and you don't have to be in a, a super tropical place. The gyro persimmon, terrific. This one you eat straight up. Now I'm going to show you this. Okay. Here we go. Gotta have a curse, y'all. I want to cut into this so you get a chance to see exactly what I'm talking about. Lately, I've been having a lot of seeds in them too, meaning they were pollinated. That is what the gyro persimmon looks like on the inside, nice, and you can see the cinnamon little sparkles inside. This is delicious. This is the one, oh my God. This is the one you eat fresh, okay? This is sweet, crunchy. It's just like an apple, but it tastes, oh my God. You taste, every time you get a little hint of cold, the cold hits the persimmons. They have a, a hint of vanilla, not a hint. It's a lot of vanilla in there. Is vanilla, a little cinnamon, a little citrusy, little orange in there. I could go on and on all day. I'm going to set this to the side. We'll finish him yet later. But, if you know what I'm talking about, Woo! The cold takes them to another level. A hint of cold takes them to another level. So I'm gonna just keep on, I'm gonna twist off as many, I'm gonna pull off as many as I can. Okay? 
if you have any questions, I'm looking. An apple pumpkin sort of kind of hunt. No, no pumpkin flavor at all. No pumpkin flavor at all. I'm trying to keep this in focus so you can see it. This is this is when I say some things ain't worth it. And you just got to go get the cutting. This branch shouldn't be going on the inside like this anyway. So I'm going to take that whole branch off. So what I like to do is you do a little pruning. You do a little pruning to your trees while you take the fruit off. So during the summer months, spring months, whatever, I do a little light pruning, but I really like to prune in the fall because all the leaves are gone. I can see what I'm doing and I'm killing two birds with one stone, okay? You can eat these fresh. The gyro and the fuyu persimmons, you could eat fresh. I'm gonna just keep going, keep coming on with me. It's not that many on my tree this year. If you watch me normally, you see there's always tons of fruit on these trees. This year I said I'm not waiting to the last minute. We're just gonna eat them like snacks um that way none of them go bad we don't have to worry about everything what all we have to do with them or nothing but see if you just eat them every day and this will keep you out of the grocery store eating debbie cakes too but that's it do you dehydrate any of these yes i do yes i do that's Lady Liz's department. She loved to dehydrate them into like these chewy persimmon cookies. Everybody like making cookies out of them. But um, me, my persimmon tree is 40 plus feet tall, but smaller fruit. You had sounds like you have the uh, American persimmon. I didn't mean to time nobody out. I got these gloves on. So, M. Doc, I'm sorry about that. Do you process them in the canner? No, I don't. No, I've canned some persimmons, but it, it, when you try to eat them again later, it don't taste right. I need to order some persimmon trees. Do you have recommendations? Um, go to Willis Nursery, Ison's Nursery. Those are the places I recommend. But honestly, you can find these anywhere. Let me see. Here's the thing about these. When you're cutting them off, you don't have to be gentle at all. This tree is forgiving when you're trying to prune it. Okay. Is it too late in the season to plant persimmons? No, no, it's not. Depending on where you live. I'm going to tell you something about persimmons. In their beginning stages, they're very, 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 very temperamental. I don't plant persimmons directly in the ground unless they already come in a pot. If they come in a pot already full of soil, then I'll plant them in the ground. If they're bare root, I do not plant any bare root persimmons in the ground ever again. I always start them out in a pot. So reason for that. They do terrible. I'm going to show you the difference between my experiences on my from planting a bare root tree in a pot versus start out in a pot first, let them let them roots grow versus directly putting a bare root tree in the ground. I'm going to show you right now. This is the result of planting a bare root tree in a pot first, letting it grow out for a year, and then putting it in the ground. Here's the result. It's so little you can't even see it. Here's the result of putting a bare root tree directly in the ground. You see that little stick right there? Let me show you. You see that little stick? 
I planted both of these trees at the exact same time. I planted that little stick. A friend of mine bought me that and sent it to me. And I planted this monster at the exact same time. So it's been about three years. You do the math on that. The other ones that I planted, I'm going to show you one here. Here's one I put in the ground this year, started it in a pot. It's almost the size as the other little stick. So I will never plant a bare root persimmon di directly in the ground on my land. Not my land, I won't. Yours might be different, okay? But I just wanted to show you the difference where, like I was telling my wife, that has to be the only deal. That's the only tree on my whole land that ain't growing. The beavers don't even want it. Come on over here with me. We're gonna just pick these off real quick, like, okay? I like this branch, so I don't wanna cut it. But they look like they glowing in the dark, don't they? Even at night, when the moon hits them, when the moon hits them, they look like this. At night, they look like they're glowing. Now, for people that don't like persimmons, I'm gonna tell you a reason you do want them on your land. The fiber and the health benefits of these fruit, and they cost a fortune. You can sell these for for a little over a, that's a nice little fortune you got dangling from your tree. And normally, I have about two or three five-gallon buckets of these hanging. Everybody's seen them year after year. Good two or three five-gallon buckets worth? That's a lot of money if you don't like them, but you want to sell them. You can make a good penny even after undercutting your competition. Uh, thank you so much, DG. So I'm going to keep on pulling them. And if y'all hold on a minute, I'm going to try to do this as fast as I can. So I can show you, sit down and, and talk to you. Let me see, 17 minutes. Let me see if I can do this in 15 minutes or, or less. I'm, I'm, I'm watching what y'all doing, but I want you to see, see this is the part I'm not able to really show you everything. It's just beautiful, just beautiful fruit. 250 each in North Carolina. Yeah, that's some good money. No matter how you cut it, that's some good money. Now I'm gonna show you a, a beauty. I'm gonna show you a beauty. This girl right here, See how red they get when they this is at its optimum flavor right before it gets soft. See it's red. Watch this. Make a genie come out. See it's red like a tomato versus orange. This is at its maximum sweetness right before the maximum maximum is when they turn into jelly because they all turn into jelly balls. But you can eat these crunchy. But this is the maximum crunchy. Oh, I got to do this. I know I'm wasting it. Watch. Uh, uh -huh. See how that is? It's, not, it's right on a cusp of crunchy and soft. See that? Um, you want to grow some, but you're worried about pests. If you're gardening... I can't help you with that because that's all part of the game. Fortunately, the persimmon has no pests. The only pest that a persimmon tree has is us and deer. No insects. Oh my God. I would, you know what? I do these videos every year. Because I want you to taste it. And I hate tasting into them. And you can't taste it. That's why I keep saying, would you please plant a tree so we can eat them together so you see what I'm talking about. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to stop eating in a minute. Hey, Spooning with Sunshine. See, I'm growing persimmon so that you can try freshly grown 
so you can try them freshly grown. Um, I didn't care for the store bought one. Mm -mm. Oh my God. There is nothing, nothing like this fruit. I cannot describe how it tastes properly. I cannot describe the texture. It's just one of the most awesome pieces of fruit. That's why I grow so many persimmons. God, this, it's its own fruit. That's all I can say. It is its own fruit. No, it don't taste like an apple. No, it don't taste like a pear. It don't taste like anything you've ever tasted. No, it does not have a weird taste. Say our persimmons have black spots all over them. Let me tell you something about, about what you got. Uh, who just said that? Craig, the persimmons, now do your research, okay? When they have those black spots all over, I'm looking because this is the south side of my house. Like this, uh, what, that, what those black spots are is sweet spots, if you will, lack of better words, okay? When the sun hits that fruit, it scolds it so hard and blackens it and burns it. It looks like somebody put a lighter or a match up to it, right? That is the sweetest fruit you'll ever eat. Eat, eat that black part, right? Sun bleach, eat that black part and watch what I'm telling you. When you see that black burnt on your persimmons, that is the best fruit. Most, some people throw that one out. That is the best dang on fruit you will ever have. So stop giving those away as the bad ones. Though you're giving away a gold mine. You're giving the flavors are stronger, more intense in the ones with the black spots on them. Normally, they're on this side of the tree because the sun comes over this side of my house. It's that way right now, but it comes over straight like this. That side doesn't have that many black spots on my fruit okay so i'm gonna keep it going it's getting dark y'all so i just wanted to let you know that so don't think you got something bad you got something super good oh that's a big boy right there that's a nice one anytime craig i don't want you throwing away no good stuff man look at that All right, I'm going to go ahead and take these off. What's up, learning to grow my own? What's up, brother? Good to see you. Look, we've been eating these since doggone probably the 1st of August. And I still got tons of fruit. I'm sitting here like, uh, we ain't got that much this year, honey. She said, we're going to have tons. God is going to be good to us. You will see. So someone mentioned jam in the in the comment. Which fruit is suitable for that? I'm gonna have you Google that, okay? Um, I don't make jam out of these at all. Uh, but learning how to make jam, that's a whole nother, whole nother conversation. Um, let me say, if it looks like it got fungus on it, don't eat it. That's not true. That's not true at all. I got to be honest with you. Some of the stuff we keep hearing, we hear it and we go with it. But we don't hear it and run and do our own research. I'm going to tell you one I heard today. Eating too many persimmons, you, you shouldn't eat too many persimmons, like more than one or something like that, they said. You'll get sick. That is, it couldn't be further from the, from the truth. That is, that is a total falsehood. Okay? We eat these all day all year i don't know where they got that information from it's probably because it's the fiber now will you have to poop oh yeah if you are locked up and you need to relieve yourself eat a persimmon they'll get the job done for you now if that's what they mean by mess your guts up i get it because if you do eat maybe four of them 
yeah, you're going to have to call in to work and, and, and tell them something. Like you, and, and you're going to have to lie because you can't tell them. I ate too many persimmons, now I'm poop. But that, I don't want people thinking something that's not true. We got to do our own research. Okay? That way, we don't look, we don't look so bad. Now, imagine somebody was trying to school me on what they heard and that was wrong. So if I didn't know any better, I would have passed that knowledge on too. I would have kept on keeping that falsehood going. That's, that's not where we are. That's not what we're going to do. We're going we gonna to speak the truth, speak the knowledge and the facts. Which one has the red leaves, the American or the Fuyu? They all have red leaves. But this is the, the gyro. I know for a fact. The gyro, the fuyu, the hachia, the hachia, you got to let turn to jelly. But we're going to talk about ones you can eat straight out crunchy. I can't remember all of them, but the, the fuyu, the gyro, and the coffee cake. You can eat straight off and they all got red leaves like this. Let me see. Okay. I think that's about it, y'all. So now I'm going to go ahead and just start lopping stuff off. Time to start, time to start playing catch. So I'm going to show you what I do every year. Normally, y'all see me up on a ladder. Lady Liz said, don't you be getting your butt up on no ladder. And we, we got our own insurance now. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. If, can y'all see that? Let me tell you something. A beast, a beast, a beast. A beast. So I'm gonna just go ahead and snip all these little branches off. It, listen, your persimmetry is just gonna grow more. It's just gonna grow. It's not, it's not shy at all. Uh, what's the best variety? There is no such thing. Uh, there is no such thing as what's the best variety. It depends on what you want. They all taste very similar. This is a double hit. Ooh, missed it. Dang. Had a double up for you. They all taste very similar. What is the tool called? I'm going to have it in the description box below, okay? So I'm going to get this, oh, see, I'm a, I always try to leave one fruit to give homage to the birds for leaving me all this fruit. Last year I didn't because I had an epiphany and I still might not. I'm going to tell you what my epiphany was. If the birds, birds are smart. If they start knowing that food is here every year. They'll keep coming back every year. And it's something about birds and other animals like mice or whatever. They instill this in their, in their DNA. Like their babies are born knowing where to go get food. Their babies are born knowing where to go nest at. I got a nest every year. Every year I got this nest that the geese come to right here in front of me every single year different geese every single year same exact spot not two inches to the left not two inches to the right exact same spot and i'm like how the hell do they do this here's another thing too you said well Leah, how do you know that's the that's not the same geese i don't know <laughs> i don't know I'm going to have to think on that one, if you know what I'm saying. So you don't know. You don't know. All right. So let's keep it going. I got a few more to go. That's when I was like, dang, I, I thought I got rid of them. No. Nah. No, nah, it's in that DNA, baby. It's in that DNA. 
I love this thing. I love this. No ladders. I don't got to go hide. I don't got to go put no heavy ladder up. Look, y'all see this one? You see this one I'm pointing at? That's a big sucker right there. Watch this. That's a big one. That one to bust me in the head and knock me out. Ooh. <laughs> Look at how big that is. That sucker is huge. You see that? Ooh. Right now, it's at, what kind am I growing? I'm growing the Fuyu, the Gyro, the Chocolate, the Coffee Cake, the Giant, uh, what is it called? The Giant Persimmon. So, this is it. Oh, that, that boy big. He big. Now, that one way up to the top, I got to figure that out. Y'all can see that too? Let me see. No, y'all can't quite see that. But I got to get it down from here. Boy, they coming to get us. All right, I'll let's get the flow. All right. Okay. We're going to keep it up. We're going to come around here. Oh, they hard to miss because they the same color as the tree. They hard to miss. What's going on, Stephen Lewis? Let me see what we got here. Any questions so far? Watching Little Rock, Arkansas. All right, Little Rock. What we got? How you doing, Kayla? Good to see you. No, I'm not making no persimmon wine. I just like to eat these fresh. Matter of fact, persimmon wine, it ain't. And there is, you have, there's certain things I don't make wine out of anymore. I don't make it out of persimmons and I don't make it out of honey. The reasons for that is honey is too precious to be making wine out of it. It loses all of its properties that way. Persimmons are super delicious. They're phenomenally delicious. Straight off the tree or jelly-like. When you make them into wine, there's almost no flavor. The wine is almost flavorless. Unfortunately, let me get this up here. Hey, y'all, if y'all wondering, I'm trying not to get hit in the face. Because I'm going to tell you one thing about these. They're dense. You hear that? They are heavy and dense. So just in case you're wondering, this is about a quarter of a pound. Each one of these off my tree is about a quarter of a pound, all right? So it's some good weight coming down way up there off of this tree. If it crack you in the head, it'll knock you in. Uh, can the giant persimmons be kept forever in a pot? No. None of the persimmons can be kept in a pot for very, very long. I give it two years tops, maybe three. They have a long taproot like, uh, like a pecan tree, like a nut tree. That long taproot, once that taproot start winding around that bucket, it will literally, literally strangle that tree to death. You'll wonder what's going on with my tree. You got it for five, six years. You finally put it in the ground five, six years. Next thing you know, your tree is doing bad. It's dying on one side. It's struggling. What you don't know, you think it's pests. You look all over your tree. No insects. Nothing is biting the bark. What you don't even know is down below your roots have wound around, that taproot wound around the tree and it's gotten bigger and you will pull out, it looked like an upside down snow cone. It killed itself. That taproot is supposed to be going straight down and shooting out roots at either side. But if you strangle that taproot, the best thing I can say do, if you ever do that and this ever happens to you, cut the whole bottom, cut off about that much of that bucket and let that tap root start over. Trust me. I got several trees I had to do that. Um, one of them was my loquat tree. That tap root, I let it go around and around. It would start doing bad. I cut that sucker almost in half. That bucket cut the whole bottom of the root structure off. That tap root started growing back. And my tree is, my tree is over there fruiting right now. Okay? So let me get these last few. Give me two ticks. I'm going to have to let these hit the floor. 
That's huge. That is huge. I got too much fruit, y'all. Hold on. Bear with me. I just want to I just want you to see the size of these big mamas. Look at that. Look at the size of them. You ain't gonna find them in the store. They got them little ones that look like uh did you fertilize persimmon tree, brother? Craig, you know what? I didn't fertilize none of my trees this year. Crazy, right? I didn't fertilize anything. When I, if I would fertilize them, put that chicken, uh, chicken salad under here, I'd be getting tons of fruit. This is a lot, though. It doesn't look like it, but doggone it, my bucket is full. And I'm going to have to come out here another time. I'm gonna have to come back. Cause I got my bucket is full. Wow, she was right. Listen to your wives, fellas. My wife was right. Okay, I'm gonna just show you this right now. I'm gonna take some questions because I can't. I'm totally full. I'm totally full. Uh-oh. All right. So we'll take, we'll take us some questions, y'all. And I do my best to answer them for you because me keep trying to pull more is not going to help us do anything. Do I have any questions whatsoever? I can finish eating my other persimmon while we, while we chat it up. Uh, hey, uh, and how you doing? Let me see. When do you prune your fruit trees? Every tree gets pruned differently and separately. It just, I just said that a little earlier. I prune it usually in the fall because I can pull the fruit and prune at the same time. Hey, Fifi's Journey, say, Lord knows I would love to buy some of those. I would love to sell them to you. It's the shipping process. I'm new to raising chickens. Do you put fresh chicken salad under your tree? Yes, I do. And I set it right on top. Some people talk about you got to compost it first. That too is a lie. If you set it right on top, you don't. Oh, mm, mm, mm. we have pawpaw trees here too in Myrtle Beach in North Carolina. Yes. How do you air layer? How do you had you had what have you had air layering success with a persimmon tree? Yes, I did, and I gave it away. I even have a video of it. Jody said, I just ate my first persimmon off my own tree and it has seeds. The others I've eaten from the store, farmer's market didn't have seeds. The reason they don't have seeds is because they don't have some other kind of persimmon tree next to them to pollinate them. Or they're pollinating at different times. A lot of the persimmons I've been eating this year have had a lot of seeds in them. Um... They are incredible. If you live in warmer climates, things decompose faster. In colder climate, you may need to let things uh, de... Mm -hmm. Does this tree grow in the Northeast Ohio? They have some that can take that weather, so yes. Certain varieties. How you doing, bro? Uh, thanks to your persimmon videos, I'm harvesting Fuyu Haichia chocolate persimmons from my own food forest. There you go. Say all praises to the most high. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. Say piece of work. Just got a fig tree with baby fruit. Would you cut them off? Yes. They will not survive. I have a mission fig tree over there full of fruit. 
they're not going to make it. So I'm seeing better veggies at farmer's market and much better prices than in the big box store. Oh, Biloxi. Okay. Heavenly places say I'm in 6B. Okay. What time of the year is good to plant persimmon trees? I th I'm pretty sure that was persimmon tree. Um, I like to plant them first thing right after the last frost. I don't like planting them in the fall. They're just too temperamental. And I'm doing, I'm telling you from my own experiences, okay? Um, I'm just telling you from my own experiences. They're just too temperamental when they're that young. And when you plant them over the winter, the persimmon trees, okay? You'll, spring will come and they won't wake up. It just be a stick in the dirt and you'll pull it up and you'll see that those, the roots are black. They're supposed to be black, but they're rotten and you won't even be able to know if they're rotten. They'll probably be waterlogged or something else. Uh, let's see what we got. The American persimmons and Asian hybrids can grow in North. Yes, yes. Thank you, Will, for that. I can't remember the name of that one. But here's the thing about that hybrid. That hybrid gives you the size of these, but they're astringent. You can't eat them fresh off the tree. Now, I heard there is such an animal. I heard there is a hybrid out there that can take northern cold, northern winters, and be eaten fresh off the tree, crunchy. I don't know. I've heard about it in forums. I'm looking for it. Say, uh, transplants in general, I to pinch off fruits and flowers so the roots can get well established first. Yes, Karen. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we got. Um, Ann says, I saw my first Fuyu persimmon since being here. Sure wish it was a tree. I saw my first Fuyu persimmon. I'm not sure what you mean. Hey, she grows. Say, I got to try that up here. Give it a shot. Or go looking for it. It's winter time. You should be on, online looking at these nurseries trying to find that one persimmon. Or Googling them. Uh, say, I bought, I bought a pomegranate tree. When should I expect something? I don't know. If I gave you an answer, you should raise an eyebrow at me because that, that's witchcraft. If you bought a persimmon tree, I have no idea where you planted it. Is it in the pot? Is it in the ground? Have you fed it? What did you feed it? How much you water it? Did you water it? All of those questions are things. The only answer I can give you for all of that. Be patient. The, I'm going to tell you the worst gardener in the world. Is one that's not patient. You cannot come out here. Jam a stick in the ground and have fruit tomorrow. That is very, very rare. If you are not patient, you're going to drive yourself crazy. You're going to mess your tree up because you're going to keep saying, um, you know, it's not doing nothing, so I'm going to cut it down. You just, you just got to wait. I just want to let you guys know something, okay? When you see these garden videos that all of us OG gardeners do, and you see the fruit, you see the harvest, right? You see the harvest, you see the greens, the collard greens, the fruit, the vegetables, the oranges, the lemons, the limes. You see that and you say, I want that. The real question you should be asking is, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been growing that tree? Because the tree that I'm pulling these persimmons off of right now, this tree has been in the ground for almost three years. When I got it, it was almost as tall as me. So that means it was probably already growing for another three years in that pot. Okay? So all of that, all of that is, is, is a big deal. That, that means something. You got to put in that, you got to put in that work and you got to be very patient. If you are not patient, you will not get any results. Hands in the dirt. What's going on, bro? 
So you have to put that time in, reap that fruit. Amen. If you are not ready to um, put in at work and be patient, same for you. It's like a relationship. This is like marriage. When you come out here in this garden, this is this is like marriage. This is like church. You come out in your garden. You you don't just go to church, but you don't drop to your knees and pray to God. And then you open your eyes and wait a minute. God, I was praying for a man. Where is he, Lord? Or oh, Lord, I was praying for me a wife. Where's she at? You said you was going to give me a wife. Don't work that way. You have to be patient. You have to put in the work. You have to go out there and make yourself accessible to what your your goals. If you don't make yourself accessible to the goals, God can only help you when you're helping yourself. So, boom, there you go. You got to come out here in your garden religiously and put in work. I took a year off in my garden last year and don't nothing happen. It's that simple. Didn't feed nothing, didn't water nothing. I spent my time doing a lot of traveling and business. Nothing happens. Eggs, the chickens stop laying eggs, you know. They start eating each other. All kind of weird stuff happen out here. You know, vines start taking over you. But um, disappointment. Right. And plant confessions. That's exactly what you're going to get. You're going to have to be confessing to murder. Literally. But you know you killed a lot of stuff. Okay. Do you grow anything specifically for your health? Absolutely everything you grow is specifically for your health, Country Hustle. You want me to tell you how? Because I know what's in it. If you're if you're referring to what type of herbs and this and that, I'm I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, my brother. Everything you grow yourself is for your health. Now, if you're talking about things specifically for different functions of the body, we'll be here all day. But when you grow your own food, there's a big difference. See, people think, okay, you can't eat fruit. Like, right, everybody the saying is, you know, fruit has a lot of sugar in it, right? Sugar, fruit has a lot of sugar in it. You shouldn't eat that much fruit and stuff like that, Very, right? Very true. Okay, here's the problem I have with that. There's a reason why things, when they come from the store, taste different. Because those farmers do weird stuff to make their farms produce. They don't let it naturally produce. They spray things on there. They inject them. They make these plants that's already in its DNA to do what it's going to do and make these monster fruit. You have to ask yourself, what is that doing to you, right? There's a, there's a reason why when you grow your own food, it tastes better. You don't feel sick after you eat it. Want to hear something? I'm allergic to spinach. From the store. I'm allergic to spinach from the store. I'm not allergic to our spinach. Why? Everything you grow yourself, brother, is medicine. Everything. Elderberries, apples, oranges. See, this sugar and this fruit, it hit different. If you eat too many apples from the store, you feel sick. You feel full. You kind of like, oh, I shouldn't have ate that other pear. Now I got gas, right? Pears from the store give me gas. Horrible gas. I could not be a public speaker after eating a pear from the store. My pears don't do that. My pears, I feel a little rumble rumble in my tumble tumble and then I go drop that off at the box. You dig what I'm saying? Ain't no, I can't sleep 
and I'm tossing and turning, gotta eat Tums. No. I'll be like this. I'll be eating that pear off my tree over here like. You drop what you're doing. Or you're about to ruin the image and the style that the draws is used to. You stop what you're doing and go let that go. That's what my fruit does. Fruit from the store, your bars. <laughs> fruit from the store, you feel sick, you feel full, you crampy. Why? You're literally growing medicine. It does not have to be a specific food that you're growing to be medicinal. That's where we're being misconstrued, okay? Like growing elderberry, growing, uh, what does my wife grow? Um, Moringa, all of that stuff. We know that what that stuff does for you, but we keep sleeping on. Growing the rest of this yourself has the same meta, uh, medical benefits this stuff you're feeding your body good natural godly sugars you're feeding your body good natural fibers that stuff ain't in that stuff at the store and i'm gonna tell you something else at the store they put all these apples or all of these pears all of these fruits in his gigantic storage facility as big as a football field they close and they pump that fruit full of this weird gas go google it i can't think of the name of this gas they pump this room full of it holds the fruit longer you will have an apple now this is a true story you will have an apple from the store and the outside of it still looks beautiful so you will just keep letting that sit on the countertop sit on the countertop sit there long enough you finally say i'm gonna eat that apple you go off and eat that apple the whole inside is rotten the whole inside of that apple is rotten because they spray a light coat of wax on the outside then they pump it full of that gas somebody said nitrogen is that it uh poly propylene gas whatever it is see i don't want to point no fingers that's why i say let's google it you will bite into an apple full of rot i just did it this summer not even this summer about a month or so ago the outside was beautiful and i'm like let me eat this apple because i ain't i ain't got no other fruit in the house let me go ahead and grab bit into it and spit it straight out gave it to my chickens and they let it sit there and they eat each other. What did that tell you? The chickens will literally eat, eat each other. And when they don't want your apple, you had a problem in your kitchen. This is food of the gods, man. Okay? Said, so I also cut an apple, laid it on the counter, and it never turned brown. What kind of apple is that? Right? We are literally growing our longevity. If we could stay if we could stay away from the store. See, I don't figure something out. I don't like talking about conspiracies cuz that uh, that that makes stuff get weird. But I will say this. Everybody keep talking about they trying to do this. They trying to do that to cut down the population. Right? This is what I keep trying to tell everybody. They ain't got to do nothing. All they had to do was put a fast food, food joint on every corner. All they had to do was put a bunch of Debbie cakes and bull crap in the grocery stores before you get to the produce. All they had to do was make it cheaper for you to go get some bologna than it is for you to get a head of lettuce. 
The rest you did yourself. Because all you had to do was take that seed, go put it to bed, and grow your own. Say this, they don't have to get rid of the population. We doing it ourselves. Because we so hard-headed, we won't change our ways. I'm, no, I'm guilty of it myself. Because that's what we've been taught. We've been bred. Somebody says sugar is addictive. You know what? Their sugar is addictive. Go and watch a video on how sugar is made. It will gross you the hell out. Go look at how white sugar is made. Everybody keep wondering why I'm the sugar cane pimp and why I've been growing my own sugar cane all these years. Yes, I do have to use sugar sometimes. Their sugar. I prefer not to, though. If I could grow enough sugar, sugar cane to make my own sugar. Right, all brown sugar is is the byproduct. Everybody keeps saying brown sugar is healthier. Brown sugar ain't no different than white sugar. That ain't nothing but the sludge at the top of the big bin. It go molasses, brown sugar, white sugar. It's no different from milk, cream, half and half, whey. It ain't no different. It's just different levels of the game. So everybody that kept telling me about brown sugar is healthier. No, it's not. People said, don't use brown sugar to make vinegar. It ain't healthy. We got to do more research before we keep opening our mouth. It make us look stupid. And everybody, they, is, they are watching us make these statements, right? So I, I do have some sugar cane. I, don't, I didn't grow that much this year, though. I, don't, I got a little bit to sell, and I think she put it up online. I got a little bit of sugar cane, the red cane, the good stuff. But not that I don't have that much. But I can part with some. Because you only need a little bit. You need about two or three sticks. And that'll grow you a nice bunch. So next year, you will have a bunch of sugar cane of your own. Off of that one, that good two or three or four sticks that you buy. You can grow tons of it with that. Okay? And I'm going to show you also, before this video go off, I'm going to also show you the video. People say, so when you get the sugar cane, what do you, what do, you do with it? How many people watch my sugar cane video where I took all them sugar cane and squeezed the juice out them boys? I turn around, squeeze the juice out of the sugar cane. I took the, the scraps and the fiber that was left from the sugar cane and I either put it in my garden or I burned it in my fire pit to stay warm. I took the juice and then I canned the juice. I uh, hot water bath canned the juice. So anytime I need some sugar syrup, I go open up a can of that sweet sugar cane juice and use it. We ain't, we need to be telling each other more stuff than how to do the latest Tic Tac dance. Right? This is bullshit here, <laughs> right? We telling each other how to do the latest Tic Tac dance. We ain't telling each other how to lose weight, how to stay healthy, how to keep your teeth in your mouth. How to keep your marriage together. How, no, we ain't telling each other none of that. None of it. Everything, and, and, and I'm going to click off on something else. I am. No, we at 59. I'm going I'm to click off on this real quick. Have you noticed that everything that the only information is being passed around is just to be negative. To be evil, wicked, negative, and destructive. Our music, our friends that we make friends with, don't nobody, don't nobody tell that girl, I know he, I know he, uh, he ain't the best looking man, but you need to hang on. He's a good man. You don't hear that no more. G girls don't tell each other that no more. Girl, he's a good man. I know he ain't up to par right now. Men go through things. Girl, like, uh, the, even the older women don't even tell the younger women this. That's how it kind of used to be. No, get rid of his ass. He ain't did nothing. All he do is sit around in the house and eat and stink up the place. It's, is them his feet or did he die? Don't know the reason why the mamas is telling the young daughters this. Because they ain't got no man. Because they listened to their friend years ago on the same thing. Fellas, we ain't no different. We ain't no different. Huh? We ain't no different. Man, you with her? <laughs> what we do? <laughs> 
What? What's wrong? I, I don't nothing. I mean, if you like it, I love it for you, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you like it, I love it. You know what I'm saying? But if it was me. If it was you, what, man? I mean, I ain't in your business. But I couldn't do it if it was me. I'm just saying, you know, you different than me. And no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, let's chop it up. Your homeboys ain't telling you what you need to do to move forward or move past the level of hanging out with his ass no more. We give each other horrible advice. We give each other horrible financial advice, horrible relationship advice. Horrible everything. Horrible health advice. Hey, man, yeah, hey, we was in the club the other night. Look here, look. I got this on me. Watch it. Hey, we was in the club the other night, right? See that right there? Bro, pop that under your tongue. What the hell is that? Just pop it under your tongue. Boy, I'm telling you, you I'll talk to you tomorrow if you take. This your best friend? Telling you to take something, pop it under your tongue, and you're going to have an experience you won't forget? And then you wake up with your drawers around your ankle. This is the kind of advice we give one another. We don't give each other no financial advice, no marital advice. I don't hear nothing about nobody else talking about. Uh, uh, and with your, with your pants around your ankle, and you ain't quite sure exactly what happened. All you know is you a mess. And ain't nobody else in there with you. No questions being answered. We give each other terror. Look at how it keep happening at the club. Look, look at the stuff. We don't tell each other, man, man, hang in there. You got this. Do, grow some food. We don't do that no more, man. Because everybody want to see each other self-destruct worse. Than, if this person is in bad shape, they want to see you in worse shape. That'll make them feel better. Don't nobody want to do right, man. We in a horrible, horrible situation. I spoke on it on my other channel, Hood Tech 73, last night. I'm going to leave it with this. Society is like a snowball, and that snowball is halfway down the hill. If you know anything about how snow works, at the top of the hill, it's this big. That little snowball starts piling up and accumulating all that evil and all that wickedness and all that hatefulness and all that mess. By the time you get to the halfway down the hill, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. All you can do is get the hell out of the way. When it hit the bottom of the hill, it's going to be hell to pay. It's going to be hell to pay. Because there is no turning back from this mess we done got ourselves into. There is no turning back. Good Lord. All you can do is guard your grill, stand out the way, and get ready for the boom. That's all you can do. Prepare yourself. Grow your own food. Get yourself together. Because it's not going to get no easier. For, I feel bad for the people that ain't try, not even trying to grow no food. Not even trying to fix their finances because things is changing so fast in finance and in politics. Do you think they're going to let you keep getting away with owing people money? Whatever credits you got, you better pay that ish off. Whatever uh, uh, payments that you have, pay it off. Your car, pay it off. Your house, pay it off. Because we... Our, we are a society that was born and raised on, think about this, this is history, this is history. If you can't pay your taxes, we'll be taking your firstborn child. No, no, not Henry. Come with us, Henry, please. No, sir, oh God, no. You hear the ducks even saying amen. That's, that's what our history, this history was. That really used to happen. Oh, you can't pay your taxes? Oh, okay. All right. Please, sir, no. Oh, dear Lord, no. No, tell the king, take me. We won't have any of that. You still have to work in the fields. Take Henry, let's go. 
please, Father. No. That's our history here. That's this history on this dirt. That really happened. That also wasn't very long ago. It was so short of a time ago in history. I'm going to tell you this. It still kind of happens to this day. It's just dressed up a little different, right? It's not, uh, you can't pay your taxes, so take the boy, seize the girl, take his wife. No. Kill the dog. <laughs> it's not that no more. Now, it's like the landlord. Oh, you ain't got the rent? You ain't got the rent, huh? Oh, you only, you only got $200 of it. You're going you gonna to need that other. Now, I'm telling you, I came down here for $1,200. So you're going to need about $1,000. You ain't got that other thousand? I can, I can fix that for you. Okay. That's still happening to this day. It's just dressed up different. And some of, it don't just go from the landlord doing it. Some of these people come to your house, knock on the door. They go, hey, hey. I got a feeling that's going to start happening way more often. Way more often. Some of our parents and some of us, let's keep it all together, trill. Some of our parents, some of us actually actually had happened you know look Forrest Gump his mama he had <laughs> okay the reason why that was so related they put it in the movie without explaining anything because we all know somebody that's been there and it's just going to get worse so all I can say to everybody in the room, man, plant your own food, get your finances in order, get all your stuff in order so you don't owe nobody. Listen, I really want, I got a couple new cars in my head I want bad, baddie bad. But I'm not going to make payments to another soul. Everything I got I own. The only thing I don't finish owning is this house and I'm working on that. Because, man, they knocking people over the head now. Right? I don't want to be able to have nothing they can just take away from me because I ain't doing right. Uh, if they're going to take stuff from me, they're going to take it because their rules is crooked. They got a crooked hand in the game. They ain't going to take it from me because I'm not doing right. Right? They're going to be able to take the things I have because of things like taxes. You know? They're not going to get me because I'm not doing right, though. So, I'm not buying nothing else new, like brand new, where I need to make payments on it like that. Just nothing. Nothing. This is not the time at all. We should be growing our own food, paying off as many bills and debt as we possibly can. And that don't mean pull out a whole nother bunch of credit cards, now that your credit is clear, and making it rain at Walmart. Pay that junk off. Amen, hands in the dirt. Pay that house off. Put them seeds to bed. Let me show you on our way. I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna show you this again. These beauties. We gonna walk up this way. Can't go nowhere without my knife. I'm gonna show you something. Look at this. Put your seeds to bed. And pretty soon, let me dip on over in here. Put your seeds to bed. And pretty soon, you're going to be like that. Put them seeds to bed. What you waiting for? What you waiting for? Now, everybody just saw Everybody just saw the video I just did, and I planted these. Look, already, already, 
my collards, my mustards already. There's no need to keep wait waiting. I'm going to show you this. This is the, uh, you see I got my bees, got my honey pumping. Y'all watch me put, y'all watch me put this in the ground. And it's already done double, tripled in size. Y'all saw me start this from nothing. I did that, I did that video. Let me, let me raise this up. Cause I want you to, I want you to hear what, what I'm talking about or see what I'm talking about. Okay. I did this for a reason. I wanted to show you. I know people didn't really get the, the video. They didn't understand it. Um, why ain't Led talking? He always talking. What is he doing? He ain't doing nothing no different than he normally do. I did this to show you that I'm going to make a garden from nothing. There was nothing here. I'm going to show you what this used to look like. This is what it used to look like. Go back and watch the video. It looked like this. I started it with a tiller and I tilled raw earth. And now, that's it. Ain't no excuses. I did that without saying it. There's no excuses. None. If you don't put the trees in the ground, they won't grow fruit. If you don't put the doggone vegetables in the ground, they won't feed you. You're going to have to keep going to the store. Right? I'm just telling you guys because it's so much more. It's so much that I don't show you that you would love. It's so much more that I, I just don't show you. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave it right here and we're going to get on off. But I'm going to tell you this. Tomorrow, I got another one for you. So be ready for it. All right? Lair Farmer 73. Any questions before I go? Real quick. Any questions? No excuses. Any questions? Thank you, Broke Farmer. Thank you, man. That's my other channel, Hood Tech 73. Go over there and you will see what I did last night on, on Hood Tech 73. We talk about electronics and we talk about... um technological ways to keep our lives together say so led did the splash plew our tree fruit yet no a beaver ate that tree let me show you where it used to be if you remember that tree that much i'm gonna show you this remember it used to be right here this is where it used to be the splash plew out beaver ate that tree i came out and there was nothing there Actually, I'm going to show you this. Can I show you real quick? Look where my shoe is. Right here was the other plum. Splash Pluot. I'm, I'm looking at the divots in the ground so I know where they was. This was, a, I forget the name, a pixie apple tree. Strawberry pixie apple tree. Every time this happens to me and I don't put these cages around my tree in time, the, be the beavers eat them. So, that's why I do this. I got to put cages around each and every tree and I cannot slip. If you looked at my cameras, I showed you the beavers be up here all night long partying. What's the best way to cover a Meyer lemon tree in a pot that can't be brought indoors? Get a canvas tarp. Get a blanket, a real blanket, go to the Goodwill or go to home, a Home Depot and get a canvas tarp. And when you get the canvas tarp, lay it over top of it. If you can't do that, depending on where you are, if you're up north, you may have a problem. If you're anywhere down south or northeast, you can even spray your trees with water the night before it frosts. The night before it freezes, that ice shield on those leaves will work. And I'm going to show you, I stopped putting tarps on my stuff, and I'm going to tell you why. I stopped putting tarps on my citrus trees because they always blow off, no matter what I do. I do everything. So let me show you this. I'm going to just show you straight up. 
hang tight and bring you down here so you can really get a, a look at what I'm doing here. As you can see, my kumquats starting to ripen. You don't got to do anything to that. That thing is super cold hardy. But I'm going to put you over here on this hill. There we go. Okay. All of this stuff that you see right here, this lemon tree, this lemon tree here, the orange trees, those are all Satsuma oranges all over here. I got the uh, pomelo and I got the ruby red grapefruit, ruby red grapefruit here. All I do now is just spray it all with water. Spray it all with water. So that keeps everything right. Keep on putting tarps on everything. They just blow off because it gets really windy down this channel of my house. It gets really windy. Okay. All right. So it gets really windy and it just blows them all off and they end up in the backyard. No, I'm not selling any Tamapan seed. You don't want to do that anyway. You want to buy a, a grafted persimmon tree. Trust me on that. Now, I'm going to show you this. I hope y'all can see that. Woo. Grow your own, eat your own. Grow your own, eat your own. And I'm going to show you what I mean. For everybody that never heard me say that, this is for you. I grow everything. I at least try. People that said you can't grow oranges in South Carolina, don't believe that. Do your own research and not just your own research. Sometimes do your own experimentation. If I would have listened to everybody told me I couldn't grow citrus in South Carolina, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. I got neighbors to walk past me like, are those oranges? Are those lemons? Yep. Growing in the ground? Yep. Yep right out the tree if you don't stop reading every label you get and just try it yourself how can i get rid of groundhogs call a professional when the see this is for my friend that said what kind of food am i growing for medicine i rest my case no chemicals were sprayed on anything here. So the first medication is stop putting their chemicals in your body. There is no taste like this. None. None. You are not going to get this from the store. The only way you get this from the store if you know this just came from the farm down the road, literally. That's your medicine. Dr. Wonder, yeah, I'm overweight. <clears throat> Why is my heart great? My arteries, everything is great. Why do my test results, my blood, my lab work come back? I'm telling you, everybody need this in their bloodstream. Growing your own stuff. Good Lord.
I'm, I'm doing that for you, Hands in the Dirt. <laughs> this is for Hands in the Dirt. I had to pour some out for my dear homies. <laughs> so that's it, you guys. I wanted to show you that. Grow your own food. For God's sake, grow your own food. That way we ain't got to worry about what he giving us. Or what they trying to do to us. We can only blame ourselves if we don't take action ourselves. We can only blame ourselves if we don't take action for our actions. We responsible for this too. Right? So that's it, you guys. Everybody have a wonderful night. Live Farmer 73, I love you. If you got any question about anything you've seen here today, any of the fruit trees, anything, the garden, how it started, Put in the comment section below and I will answer you. All right. Everybody have a wonderful night. This, let me back up. I don't never ask nobody for nothing. I don't ask you to like. I don't ask you to subscribe. I don't ask you to share my videos. I don't ask nobody here on YouTube for nothing. Except one thing. Grow some freaking food. Didn't ask you to like. Didn't ask you to share. Didn't ask you to subscribe. Didn't ask you to share the video. None of that. Except just grow your own food. Prepare yourself for war. Get yourself together. Fix your finances. Stop being frugal and loose with your money. Not frugal, but stop being excessive with your spending. You know how they get everybody in every freaking war or every time. You know who's the winners? The winners are the ones that, that got something on you. No, I don't use miracle Grow on my food, Jessica. I use it on things like elephant ears, things I have no reason to be eating. I promise you, family. That's all I ask you. I, all I'm really asking you is to get yourself together. Because I'm telling you, if they know they got you by the balls, they gonna always use that against you. When you know I don't owe nobody nothing, right? I don't got to come to you for no money. I ain't got to come to you for no food. I ain't got to come to you for no shelter. I ain't got to come to you for no help. I ain't got to come to you or call those three numbers for protection and to protect my house. You don't owe nobody nothing. Can't nobody hold it against you. I'm going to tell you the, the worst people on the planet. The worst people on the planet is they do one thing for you. They loan you $5 one day. They loan you $5 at lunch at work. Five years go by, and then they get mad at you, right? Like, hey, man, let me let me use your car. You can't use my damn car. Oh, it's like that. It's like that. I can't use your car, your new car? No. Car just cost me $46,000. No. Remember that time I gave you that $5? Remember that? Huh? You the one ain't had no lunch that day. But I, me, nobody else, me, your boy, gave you, hungry ass, $5. And I can use your funky ass brand new car. <laughs> Look at how we grown. Boy, your head so big, I bet you you need about four pillows at night. See how people hold stuff over you no matter what it is they loan you anything they can loan you a pencil with no eraser on it they gonna remind you one day i don't take nothing from people man and if i feel good, like dang i gotta have that right there i try to get it my damn self i don't like borrowing or asking for nothing because i don't want people to come to me down the line when i'm at my most vulnerable and it's like, hey remember that time I had gave you that $2, man. That was my last $2, too, bruh. 
You know, that was the two dollars I was supposed to. They give you some sob ass story. That was the two dollars, man. I was supposed to be, you know, catching that bus, man. I missed I missed that bus. I lost my job, man. But I had that two dollars that I gave you that time, man. I would have had my job. I probably would have been the boss of the corporation by now, but no, I gave you that two dollars. You. And you won't let me borrow your funky ass girlfriend. I see what you're doing. <laughs> I see what you're doing. I know how they do the head blow up, swell up. All right, I got you. That's how we do each other. That way, I don't borrow nothing. If I ain't got it, I ain't getting it. If I ain't got two dollars to get this, I just ain't getting it. Oh man, I got you. I'm good. Man, it's just two dollars. Man, I give you two dollars. Man, go ahead and get that. I'm good. Man, here, man, stop playing. I'm good. I don't need it. This is what I always say. If it's there in the morning, when I go get $2, that means it's meant for me. If it's still there. Sometimes that's God telling you, you need to go sleep on that decision anyway. Because I got something in my head that I want to go buy right now. And I went home and slept on it. And I didn't have the money. I waited till I got the money. I went back to that store. That item was still there, if you get what I'm saying. That item was still there. And I looked at it and I said, how many other things could I do with that money? If it's still there next week, I get it. It's been there for the last three months. And, and I keep going back and saying that. It's not meant for me. Because I'm still... Playing games with it. So I just leave it alone. I like to go and look at it in the case every now and then. Can I touch it? Can I hold it? Put my hands on that real quick. Whoa! Get this out of my hand, man, before I mess around and do something stupid. I do it all the time. Grow your own. Eat your own. Raise your own. Chickens and rabbits in the pen. Food, eggs in the boxes. Groceries, man. Honey. Groceries. Right? All right, y'all. Everybody have a wonderful night. Live Farm 73. I'm sorry for putting y'all through that mess. All right? Live Farm 73. I love y'all and good night. I'm going to have, I'm, I got a mean one for you tomorrow. Damn, that orange was good. All right. Y'all have a good one.